Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome, welcome, welcome all to this uh, stream. All right, I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah, are you ready? Good evening. Right. I'm Dr. Hammond Brown. Brown. I'm standing, I'm standing on the park lot, lot in the Twin Times Hall. It's Saturday, Saturday morning, morning, October 26, 1985, 1 a.m. And this, this is Temporal 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 Come on, I need a boy. Get in there. There you go. Yep. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Okay. Please note that Einstein's clock is in precise synchronization with my control watch. Got it? Really? Right, Jack Doc. Good. Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch your head. Watch your head. Have a good trip, Einstein. Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch your head. You got that thing hooked up to the car? Car? Watch this. Yeah, okay. What's this? Got it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know you guys. I know. I know. I know, guys. Yeah. Hope you guys are having a, you know, good day. And if my calculations are correct. And uh, by the way, in case you're wondering, why am I doing this? Why am I streaming this today? Well, because I didn't get a chance to do it like What's four this? years What's ago. This? So, yeah. So, yeah. So I just thought... Okay, what the... Hello? Hello? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Doc. You disintegrated Einstein. I'm not Marty. I didn't disintegrate anything. <laughs> Sorry about that, you guys. I didn't mean to interrupt him, so... So if you guys have any... You know, if, if you guys, you know, have any... Uh, Fond memories of fond memories of watching this, watching this, watching this screen, of watching this uh, trilogy. You know, feel free to share them. The, feel free to share them. You know, let's uh, get our conversation going here. Wait a minute, Doc. Are you telling me that you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? Precisely. If you're gonna build a time machine into a car, why not exactly. with some style? Besides, the stainless steel construction made the bus dispersal. Uh oh. Look out! Yep. And there's where things start to go haywire. Oh boy. Uh. Doc? Doc? Oh, that's oh. peculiar. That's strange. Oh, where's the car, Doc? Should have caught up with us 27 seconds ago. ago. Doc, uh, what happened, to Einstein? No need for concern. Don't it's worry. Probably it's just probably. a minor miscalibration of the Don't worry. Surgery. It's probably nothing. Why you couldn't get my notebook? It should be in the toolbox. Probably, box. probably not. Probably nothing to worry about. It's probably nothing to worry about. Notebook. 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 Ah, here it is. Got it. Flux capacitor? That's it. What the heck's a flux capacitor? Oh, yeah, it's the, oh. the thing that makes time travel possible. In this notebook, I've detailed the nearly three decades of scientific breakthroughs necessary to build a working time machine. If it ever fell into the wrong hands, the consequences could be catastrophic. Let's see. It's mass equals I times Z. That something's way off here. And I hope everyone's uh, having a, you know, great October, whatever the heck day it is for you. Uh, of course, Doc? it's it's uh, Monday, October twenty first, twenty nineteen, around here. So um, you know that uh, that day is kind of you know kind of important, just you know kind of important, you know to people to fans who have actually watched a certain trilogy. You know, that, uh... I'm sorry, Marty. Dad, come back! <sighs> so, basically, it all boils Dad. down to, um... Yeah, this, uh... You know... Marty? 
Is everything okay? Yeah. Yeah, Mom. I it was it was just a nightmare. Uh, I was in the past. Well, the past actually. Is, uh, well, if you guys haven't figured out the 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 uh, plot well, of this game yet. Now. Back in good this game actually takes place about six or seven months after like the end of the third out. movie. For you. And. Huh? Yeah, as you guys can pretty much guess, Doc's disappe Doc's, you know, vanished to wherever it is he is. And, uh, well, yeah. He, um, of course he's, you know, somewhat, he's stuck somewhere. And, well, that's about all, that's about all the more information you're getting right now. For me, yeah. Yeah. Wow. You know, you know something, you guys? This. And I don't know if you guys know this or not, but of course you might know this by now. This was actually, this game is actually the fourth movie that we never got. It is never going to happen. So I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't get my hopes up, you know, too much Dad, for a part four, ever. Sam? Better late than never. You wouldn't believe how much rare stuff there is back here. That's Doc stuff. The city has no right now, to... Now, son, I know you're upset, but your friend's been gone for months, and the city really seems hell-bent on using his land for that new parking garage, and... Hey, is that a first edition Jules Verne? That's just not fair. At least things can't get any worse. Hey, Marty. Give me a fucking break, man. Come to see if the old crackpot yes. had any furry treasure. Knock it off. Okay. Knock it yeah, off. I guess okay. I'm just... Remembering, that's all. Remembering. That's all. You know, just trying to remember, you know, Doc as he was. A fish tank? I never knew Doc raised fish. Doc's fish had weird taste and decor. I kind of like Doc. <laughs> Does nature contrive it? So that even with a time machine, you can intervene to prevent your own conception, for example. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, if that's the case, then how do you explain? Okay, if what that, if what that, if what that little commercial just said is true, then how do you explain the way things turned out in the in the in like in the first movie, huh? Doc built this model of downtown Hill Valley way back in 1955. The clock tower in the courthouse even works. What the? Is that Doc's notebook in there? Hey, that looks just like the courthouse. You gotta hand it to the old coot. He was good with his hands. Uh, Biff, uh, can, can I see that a minute? This would look great in my fish tank. Give the old carp something new to nibble on. Can I see that model courthouse for just a second? I need to get something out of it. Like what? A not guilty verdict? That was a joke. Oh, huh. But really, can I? Nah, I think I'll hold on to it. Give it here, Biff. Well, well, look at what we have here. It looks like plans for something. What's a flux catheter? It's none of your business. Doc <sighs> asked me to... Brown's worm food, kid. This, can you seriously not read? First of all, that says flux capacitor, you you idiot. Hey, Biff. I only want that notebook because, well, I'm, I'm sentimental. It's like a piece of Doc. Doc's dead. Time to get over it and move on. He's not dead, you idiot. Uh, you, never mind. You idiot. He's not dead, you idiot, you idiot, you idiot. He's still very much alive, you moron. Some noise. He's, so, he's somewhere in the past. Or the future.
He just can't have. He just doesn't know. He just can't get home right now. Hey, Dad. Why is my guitar got a price tag on it? Sorry, Oops. son. Sorry about must that. Must have been an overzealous clerk. Just pick it up. I'll iron things out with the bank. Okay. Hey, Dad. Problem? Problem? Biff? Biff? He's got this thing, see, and I really need to get it back. If he stole something from you... No, it, it's one of Doc's notebooks. He found it first, but... Oh. Well, then I'm not sure what to tell you. I guess you'll just have to appeal to his better angels or something. Or something. Yeah, right. Appear to that... Appe appeal to that... To that dick... To that dickhead's... Who's running this sale anyway? Better oh, angels? I don't me, think son. you can do that. You? Why? Well, once it became apparent that the bank was going through with the sale, I volunteered to oversee it in order to make sure that Doc's stuff would be treated with a modicum of respect. Isn't that right, Biff? You got it, Mr. McFly! Oh, brother. Well, actually, now that you mention it... You think dreams can predict the future? Well, you know I don't go in for that mystical stuff. But I do think they can reflect how you're feeling about the future. Well, but now that I think about it... I'm telling you, this sale is a joke. Doc's only been gone for a few months, and I happen to know... Yes, you've told us he's not dead. He's on a trip. Let's say you're right. Have you considered that this trip may not have been entirely voluntary? I hate to say it. But Doc's run up some pretty sizable debts around town. Maybe he's just hiding from his creditors. Or maybe... No luck with Biff? Well, don't give up. Sure, he can act stubborn Or maybe, and, and, all, and this is a possibility, maybe, it's, be, maybe it's because he can't get back home. Maybe it's because Doc can't get back home because he's stuck wherever he is. Duh. Here's an oldie. Buddy goody. Try that. On. Now try that on a as a possibility. Hey look, yeah. it's Chuck Butthead. <sighs> really, Biv? Really? Let me you're show basically, you You're basically going to insult now, the guy who wrote, who wrote, who wrote, who wrote, guitar. Who wrote, oh, a, who wrote a great God. song and called right, Gotta Be Good, and it's Chuck well, you Berry, right. you nut, Let's Chuck Berry, right. dumb nuts. That's right, it's, that, the guy's name is Chuck Berry, not, you numb, numb nuts. Damn it. Man, you kids have ruined rock and roll. I don't think so. Hey, Dad. Yo. About Biff. Dad, I know you're trying to help. He talks a big game, son, but he's not so tough. I've been dealing with him a long time. Believe me, I can. Uh, yeah, you've been dealing with him for about for about. Uh, I guess you. Thirty-one can. years. Okay, son. I'll say since about since about high school. <sighs> keep looking around. Thanks, Dad. And now something your kids are really gonna like. Thanks for warming him up for me, butthead. Seriously? Chuck Butthead? Biff, can you seriously not say someone's name right? Watch me blow the lid off. It's Chuck Berry, you, you idiot. Jesus. Chuck <laughs> Berry. Not Chuck Butthead. Oh, you shit. dumb. You dumb dumb. Oh my god. Oh my god. Ah, uh, Doc, where are you? Okay, now I know, now I know I haven't seen you for a while, but I'm almost certain this isn't one of your shoes. Huh. He's not in it. He's not in it. I'm telling you, he's not in it. Just watch. You'll see. <laughs> yeah. Just 
一位不是。Come from, boy. Didn't you bring Doc with you? Nope. Doc, look, I know I haven't seen you for a while, but I'm almost certain that's not that that thing shouldn't exist anymore. Okay, Doc. I know I haven't seen you in a few months, but I'm pretty sure this isn't your shoe. Retrieval? In case of my failure, return to the DeLorean within a lot of time. I program the time machine to jump to these four dimensional coordinates without me. As you are well aware, time travel is an inherently risky activity, and despite my elaborate precautions, there's always the possibility that I could land in trouble sometime. And that sometime is now, or then, or uh, maybe later. He's in trouble. Marty, come to my rescue in the past. Or was it the future? Anyway. I'm relying on you to do it again. Please. Oh, hey, Clark. Uh, welcome. Welcome. Oh, my. Aren't you going to tell me when that is? No, he's not. Oh, my. Right, right. Last time departed. Last time departed. Uh, oh, boy. Oh, jeez. Ah, oh, damn Come it. Come on. Come on. Crap. Crap. Oh, great. How am I supposed to find him now? Well, that doesn't really help. That, that's not much of a help right now. Uh, well, that that's cool, Clark. And the reason why I'm playing it today what do you is know because about think, about what, think, about, think about today's date. Great Scott, I think he's doesn't, onto something. Doesn't today's date kind of ring a bell with you? Huh? <laughs> yeah, it should. If it doesn't, it okay, should. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting somewhere. How's this supposed to lead me to Doc, Einie? That's right. I guess there's time for a quick game. Ha ha ha! I told ya. I knew you. I knew you'd figure it out at some point. <laughs> okay, now I'm ready. Think about it. You knew today there was a significance today of that date. Step away from the door. Now, yeah. let me get a look at you. Einstein, come on. Okay, wait a minute. Just as I suspected. Cool again. Well, if you haven't figured it out, all you got to do, dude, is read the uh, name of the, you know. All you got to do is read the name of the of the, of the, of the video. Strickland, are you, ma'am? Not that it's any of your business, but I'm his sister, and uh, <laughs> oh, and you're one of those McFly slackers, aren't you? Not really. Uh, what's old man Strick? I mean, what else has your brother been saying about me? Nothing I couldn't have deduced for myself, slacker. I'm not a hooligan, ma'am. I'm a, a teenager. I wasn't born yesterday, young man. No, you, <clears throat> no, but it's pretty obvious you were born. So, you were born sometime, maybe sometime during the 1910s or, or possibly the 1920s. Uh, yeah. All skateboarders are hooligans. It's Not true. Look it up. Stay your business, child. You're making me miss Merv. Well, see, that's the thing. I'm not sure why I'm here. Einstein here brought me, and... Well? Can you let me in? I've got something to show you. What is it? Let me see. How about a shoe? A shoe? Wow, 
now what would I want? <laughs> yeah. Stay there. When it comes to emotional wrestling, it was only three of Well, that's cool, man. You know, if you wanna. <sighs> Sorry, Einstein. Sorry, Ernie. You're gonna have to wait outside. Sorry. Sorry, pal. Well, took you long enough. Sorry. Um, there's a lot of stairs. Well, there's a no, lot of stairs. Return there, the you know. shoe, I mean. I oh. lost it ages ago. Davey Boy Smith won the Intercontinental title one. at SummerSlam 92. Much better. So, <sighs> him and orderly. Nah, well, yeah, that's we true. Sort of that's, a, that's a pretty good no, one. I, All I've got is tea and tea. Yeah, that, that was a pretty good moment. I, I, I must, I must I admit. I not to jump to conclusions, but... After all, uh, out of ten and you city. are aware that you actually oh, have to turn on the uh, turn on the stove, right? You are aware of that, right? Uh, you dumb down your neck. It's the water's never going to boil if you don't turn on the stove, you dummy. Hey, God, and then and how old oh, are you at this no, point? You must be. Really freaking old. Mind if I take a look? Go ahead, dear. Let's see. Man, these are powerful. I could see Biff going into the video store. Yeah, you wouldn't believe the filth that boy watches. Yeah, he's nothing but an out of control hedonist. Just like when his Macho father. Man and Miss Elizabeth reunited at WrestleMania Seven. Yes, that was a that was a good one too. That was a good one. Uh, Miss Strickland? Jack! Diane! However, to be honest with you, I wondered, you know, yes. what was the reasoning behind that? So, Miss Strickland, I don't suppose you'd be willing to answer to tell me... Remember when you lost your shoe? Shoe? That shoe the shoe there. I just brought you, you idiot! Oh, that, that shoe! shoe. What a nosy Let's see, what was, No one when likes was this busybody, you know. But when oh, was fine, that? let me think about it. Uh, yes, I, I remember. I, I lost it in a scuffle with a, a dog. Oh, when was it? Oh, yes. The um, day could it have been about, say... Speaking sometime speaking around 55 about? years ago? Don't act so surprised, you dummy. Your generation doesn't hold a copyright on moral depravity, you know. Oh my Sin God. has been on the proud Hill Valley since the day it was founded. Oh, really? Well, then, it, then tell me... Wow, a speakeasy. That must have been wild. Is it true they used to drink gin out of slippers like my grandma said? Don't romanticize the past, young man. Prohibition was a time when gangsters ruled the town while honest citizens quaked in their beds. Well, then I don't suppose you'd mind telling me... So where was it? That speakeasy that burned down, I mean. That was ages ago. If you're looking for bootleg hooch... And the other one no, was I'm when Kurt won the so. world title I'm against Steve Austin in his home city of Pittsburgh, then his family, Annie. and the rest. Generation of well, yeah, that's true. That's... that's well, that, that's true. Because honest to God, honest to God, there was like... Honest to God, there was like... I think that was the that was around the time when you know when Stone Cold was starting to um uh was more or less starting to burn out a little. 
you know, when, his, when he was starting to feel the, you know, sting of, you know, his, uh, you know, was starting to feel the sting of, you know, the fact that basically his mind was go was go was going. Every issue from 1871 to the present. If it really, in Valley, from 1871 to the pre to 1986, really. No, I set my sights on lower things. Really. Or how about somebody just, or how about everyone just tell you to shut up? I guess somewhere in these stacks there must be an article about the speakeasy burning down. Naturally. I probably wrote it myself. I was quite a reporter back in the day. Any idea what date that article came out? Well, obviously the day after the speakeasy burned down. Well, gee, why don't you... So the video store building must have gone up after the speakeasy burned down. The following year, as I recall. Oh. Don't let me keep you from your business. Don't let me keep you from your business. You there! Don't even think about tossing that Kleenex on the ground! Really? Vice Principal Strickland? Mother never could keep little Gerald out of her clothes. <laughs> that Patrick's crazy place guy won for him was when Mick Foley lost his held his cell to Triple H. It hot in here. And that was an emotional moment for him because well, yeah, yeah, I'll give you that. I'll give you that one, man. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. And also, you know, you know something, man? If I had to, you know... Juveniles collide with manure truck. <laughs> nice picture. picture. Damn it. Brown Mansion destroyed. 1962. No, no, that's not where Doc's stranded. All right, Einstein brought me this shoe, and Miss Strickland lost the shoe on the day the speakeasy burned down. But when did the speakeasy burn down? I at least need to know the year. Wait Hey, uh, mind if I use your binoculars for a sec? Go ahead, dear. All right. I mean, dude, honest to God, if you have any memories of watching the trilogy, of watching the, the trilogy of this, or playing this game yourself, you know, just go ahead and, you know, share it. Look at me. I'm far too old. You know, if you do. Perfect. There's the whistle. Surely the water's boiling by now. You knucklehead. Well, that's good. Let's see. Ground broken on site of former speakeasy. Singer vanishes. Well, let me tell you, man. If you haven't seen it yet. Crowd, soup kitchen exposed. Well, Here then we you're in for, you're in for something. Slain. As I hope you enjoy gave it. Way to old fashioned vengeance last night when a mob descended I really Valley hope you enjoy it, man, because the suspect in the speakeasy arson case, a drifter well, known as Carl let's Sagan, just say... was pulled from his yeah. Carl Sagan. It's Doc! June 14th, 1931. Jeez, I gotta rescue him. Oh man. And yep, there it goes. My new papers! Sorry. Sorry, Mr. Strickland. Uh, let me 
Sorry about that. You've gotten my history out of order. Oh, do you know how long it'll take to fix what you've done? Well, let me tell you that if you if Clark if you've watched the trilogy, then you already know what the what it's about. If you haven't yet, then when you get a chance, Marty, enjoy. Where you been, son? And what are you doing in that getup? Well, to tell you the truth, uh, didn't I tell you? I, I got the lead in the school play. Uh, we're doing Grapes of Wrath. Right. Oh, Steinbeck. Who are you playing? Um, uh, never mind. You don't have to explain. I'm sure whatever it is you're up to, you know what you're doing, right? Well, I hope so. Hey, sometimes you gotta go out on a limb for the ones you love, right? Wish my dad had understood that. You won't stay away too long. You barely know I was gone. Yeah, you barely... Yeah, right. You'll barely know he Ready was gone. Go, Einstein? <laughs> yeah, right. All right. Three circuits on. Flux capacitor. Uh, fluxy. Okay. If Doc's gonna get killed on June 14th, 1931, I'll just show up the day before and get him out. I hope you know what you're doing, Doc. Because let me tell you, man. This is one of the... Let me tell you, this trilogy is pretty darn good. I only say that because, well, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't always make sense, but you know what? Don't worry about it. The third movie on the other hand, yeah. You might want to, you know, take that one with a grain of salt. <sighs> the Hill Valley Police Department. Oh, and uh, Clark, if you're still watching, did you know that this game is actually, it was actually supposed to be the, was that, it's actually the fourth movie that we never got? That's right. You heard me right. This is the fourth movie that we never got. I figured I'd just, you know, try doing a, you know, stream for you guys, try doing, a, try doing this for you guys today, so that way you guys can, uh, you know, find out for yourselves, so you guys can see it for, see for yourselves, what the fourth movie looks like, even though it's not a movie. Einstein, where'd you go now, boy? You heard me right, guys. This is what the fourth movie is, except it's in video game form. That's right. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm looking for a man-in-the-street reaction. 
Naturally, you know about the explosion that destroyed this illegal gin establishment. Uh, no, yeah, I read not about it, completely. Yeah. So what's your opinion of Carl Sagan, the stranger who single-handedly did what the law As in, we don't know who do did it. We don't years, know who really did it. Hill Valley of the scourge of liquor. Uh. uh you can mark me down as a supporter. The young man said, flashing a boyish yet virile grin. Hill Valley needs more upstanding youths like yourself. Do you have a message for the vicious gangsters who still roam these streets? No doubt plotting to corrupt our citizens with another den of booze, sin, and debauchery? Well... No, uh, not really. That's the spirit! Destroy them with indifference! If we refuse to patronize their establishments <laughs> and glorify their wicked exploits, they'll soon be exposed oh, to the pathetic boy. wretches they are! May I get your name? Yeah, it's... It's... Uh... Michael Corleone. Thank you for sharing your candid opinions, Mr. Corleone. Edna Strickland, Hill Valley Herald. Oh, boy. I know. I met you back. I mean, I'm familiar with your work. You read my column? How sweet. I know it's just an etiquette column, but I believe it'll lead to bigger and better... Oh! Einstein, no. Down, boy. Is this wretched creature yours? He assaulted me once before. That? What's got into you? Wait, Aggressive when did that happen? must be kept on leash at all times. It's the law. Look it up. Doc, I gotta find Doc. Oh, I know where he is. Where he is, he doesn't belong. Hey, uh, can I get some moose? What does this look like? A hunting lodge? Uh, dude, remember, moose, as in a hair product, didn't exist back in 1931. I guess this is where the speakeasy burned down. How'd Doc ever get mixed up in that? <sighs> Gail, Zemeckis, and Fine. Attorneys at law. <laughs> no solicitors. McFly, Biff, McFly, Kid. Grandpa, Tannen. That's Mr. Tannen to you, Audie. What are Mr. you doing Tannen, out here? To you, Audie. Well, I was getting kind to you, of Audie. So I figured to I'd come Audie. down here for some yeah, free yeah, soup. You knucklehead. Just thought I'd come down for some soup. Think, oh, McFly. really? The DA's throwing around subpoenas McFly. like Ruth. I, mean, I, mean, I don't think Ruth's a pitcher anymore. Shut it. If one of those subpoenas landed in the hands of my number cruncher, I'd be in a whole lot of trouble. I could even get sent up the river. You, you should be in that, trouble. You? As a matter of fact, you should be sent up the river for life. Would you? Uh, you no, scum, you scumbag. Not, All right. That's you better. scumbag. What are you looking at, punk? What are you looking at, punk? Eyes on the soup, kid. Eyes well, on the soup, kid. Well, what? What well, are you what? still doing here? Sorry, kid. I'll just... Run back to the safe house. You do that. And McFly... Uh, yes? That what? hat's too flashy. You better let me hold on to it. Ah. Uh, now scram! You got it, boss. Uh, right, don't come out until I give you the all clear. <laughs> yeah. I swear, if even one of you mooks could... It's two pretty obvious to me that... Hey, it's pretty obvious anyway, to me that Tannen... I'm to make myself irresistible. Guys, I am, begin, I am really starting to believe that the Tannen family are nothing but a bunch of it are a bunch of idiots. Maybe I should go to the jail and talk to Doc before I start dialing random people in 1931. No, actually, I'm not just starting to think that. I've known that. I've known that for about. Uh, this is the jail in 1931, anyway. Thirty-four years. That's right. The first movie came out in 1985, as as we all well know. Doc. 
What are you doing here? You sing for me, Doc. I, I did? did? When? May 14th, 1986. 1980? The automatic retrieval system. Of course. Of course. I'd almost forgotten about that. I forgot about that. So what's our plan for getting you out of here? Plan? We don't need a plan. We don't. Not in the slightest. The police picked me up for that sneaky yes, fire. In case you haven't guessed ago. already. Hey, hasn't got a case. They're releasing me yeah, tomorrow morning. You probably have already guessed who that is. Who, who, whose voice car. that is. Sorry about that. But it's so wonderful to see you. We have a lot of catching up to That's right. Yeah, you, you might want to hold off on that, Doc. The guy who played Doc played Doc in Please all three stop. of the movies. I'm going to be gunned down by gangsters on the That's steps right. of the courthouse. Why would they do that? Yes, they didn't approve of my burning down their speakeasy. Yeah. Very that was a pretty easy yeah, misgu the misguided plan. attempt. The plan. Right. Right. But what? what? Uh... Why don't we try to tough it out? How do we know it's coming? Maybe we sneak it past the gangsters with a bulletproof vest or something. No, no, no. That might work with one or two bullets, but from the looks of this article, it appears that I'm going to be two down in a hail of atomic gun fire that rendered the innocent stranger little more than a puffy mass of bones and bristles. Who writes like that? Who wrote that? According to the byline, one Edna Strickland. I should have guessed. One Edna Strickland. Why don't you tell the authorities? Tell them what? Tell them what? That my friend from the future has proof that I'll be murdered tomorrow? They'd ship <laughs> us both off to the loony bin. And trust me, you don't want to see the inside of a 1931 insane asylum. Why don't I take the DeLorean, go back in time before you were arrested, no, and stop no, 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 getting no, no, caught no, no. in the first place? Don't even think about it. Without my unjust incarceration, the events that sent you into the past might never happen, resulting in a paradox of continuum shattering proportions. Jeez, we've been back together for five minutes, Doc. You're already talking about the Don't end of the universe. Don't be ridiculous. I, I'm that. only talking Don't about... Don't be ridiculous, Marty. I was, I was only talking about the, the end of the universe, universe as we, we know, know it. it. I was only talking about... I suppose I could just the get into the universe as we know it. Jail. No, no, that's far too dangerous. Not just to me, but to random innocent people in the past. The repercussions could be... <gasps> that's it! What's that's it? it? A rocket-powered drill. Huh? A rocket-powered drill? Not, Not yet. yet. I haven't built it yet. You've lost me. Okay, you've you lost me. Listen, a few months ago, my 17-year-old self sent in a patent application for a rocket-powered drill. I abandoned the project after I never heard back from the patent office, but the prototype should be nearly complete. Oh, great. Brother. I'll just run back to your lab and... No, no, I no, said nearly no. complete. You need me to help you finish it. How the hell am I supposed to sneak a half-finished rocket-powered drill into your cell? Not me, me. 1931 me. Wait a minute, Doc. You want me to convince your 1931 self to build a rocket-powered power drill, drill to break you out of jail? Precisely. Uh, Tack? What about that little thing you're always, you're always, you're always saying, like... Don't talking to yourself cause, you know, irreparable damage to the space-time continuum or something? It should be fine. I've already invented the idea of the rocket drill. You've just got to go my younger self into finishing the prototype. Well then, tell me this. How am I supposed to convince your younger self to finish the rocket drill? Just tell him I need to break his older self out of jail? Absolutely not. Whatever you do, you can't tell my younger self anything about time travel. I won't come up with the inspiration for the flux capacitor for another 24 years. Then what am I supposed just to... Just be your charming self. What I remember, I'm a pretty easygoing kid, so enlisting me in a scientific adventure should be a piece of cake. It should be easy. I don't suppose you'd mind telling me. Okay, well, let's say I go along with this crazy idea. Where can I find you? I mean, uh, the other you. How should I know? It was over 50 years ago. Why did you go over to the soup kitchen next door and give my house a call? They'll know where to find me. Soup oh, kitchen. God. Got it. Just stay away from the soup. It'll cause irreparable damage to your digestive system. I take it you've actually eaten some of the soup, Doc. Ugh. I guess I better get started. Don't worry, Doc. I'll get you out of here in no time. I'm not worried. Once you and my younger self put your heads together, you'll be unstoppable.
Don't be ridiculous. I was only merely referring to the, to the end of the universe as we know it. That's ridiculous. Brown results. Uh, hi. Uh, do you know where I could find Emmett Brown? Young Master Brown is currently tending to his clerking duties at the courthouse. Ooh, may I say his calling? Good. Courthouse? Doc never told me he worked at the courthouse. Well, I have a feeling there's a lot of things he's never told you before. And co it's coincidence, isn't it? Coincidence of coincidences. Stuck. Morty, have you found my younger self yet? Could you please check? Could you please tell me? So, according to the British guy on the phone, you're working at the courthouse. Of course. In the summer of 31, my father made me work as a junior clerk. Uh, that summer? I hated every minute of it. My father was, oh, it's a, it, It's it May, you... you head it's over to the courthouse right summer away. is and June, July, and August, you nut, you nut, you nut. Okay. Then please tell me... Where have you been all this time? I missed you. I missed you too, Marty. But I thought it was important to let you live your own life for a while, free from the insanity of time travel. I gotta admit, it was nice to not have my family history blowing up in my face for a few months. Besides, I've been busy raising my own unpredictable teenagers. <laughs> so then, so then, would you please let me know? So how are Clara and the kids? Fine, fine. fine. Right now we're trying to decide where to send Jules and Bird to college. Clara prefers the 2020s, but I'm partial to the 1960s. We're planning on visiting you and Jennifer in 2011 soon. Me and Jennifer? In 2011? Oh, forget I said anything. Well, then maybe you'd be good enough to, to let me know. Where did the DeLorean come from? The last time I saw it had been smashed to pieces by a train. It's a fantastic story. Do you remember when the DeLorean got struck by lightning in 1955? Yeah. Unbeknownst to either of us, the lightning produced a temporal duplicate of the time machine. One that was tossed 70 years into the future. What? I found out about it during a trip to 2025 and recovered it just in time to stop Rift Cannon from vandalizing the time stream. Heavy. So that DeLorean... ...is for all intents and purposes the exact same machine as the original. Plus or minus little bells and whistles I've added over the years, of course. <laughs> Well then, Doc, I would really like to know... So, what were you doing in 1931 anyway? Oh, oh not much. nothing terribly exciting. Indulging in a little personal nostalgia, picking up a few rare out-of-print books to surprise Clara on her birthday, solving a historical mystery or two. The usual... The usual? You lead a pretty unusual <laughs> it's life, It's a pretty Doc. unusual, it's an unusual universe, universe, Marty. universe, Marty. It's an unusual universe, you know. Doc, maybe you can help me with a little problem here, okay? I hate to tell you, Doc, but your last time departed display is on the fritz. It is? So it's how did you find me? I found one of Edna Strickland's shoes in the DeLorean. How did one of her shoes get in the DeLorean? Einstein took it from her. He did? Well, that's strange. How strange. I he almost never attacks people. Not He's without not a good, good reason, reason, anyway. Oh, okay. Then tell me, then tell me this. How'd you wind up in jail in 1931 anyway? During my trip to the past, I decided to look into one of Hill Valley's unsolved mysteries. The fire at the speakeasy. Exactly. Exactly. But I was safely hidden across the street. But when the fire started, there was a tremendous explosion, and I was knocked unconscious by a stray brick. When I woke up, I was here in jail, charged with arson. It's horrible. I know. Worse yet, I still don't know who started the fire. That's... that's... Terrible. Okay. Well, here's something you might be a little, you might want to know about. So I bumped into at the soup kitchen. My grandfather. No. Oh. Don't worry. I didn't talk to him or change his future or anything. Good. 
I wish I could, it's though. It's good. Sarah's cannon is treating him like dirt. Don't worry. If history plays out as it's supposed to, he'll soon be out from under Kitan's thumb and free to live out his life as a humble accountant with your grandma. What was, what her, was name her name again? again? Sylvia. Right, Sylvia. Well then, maybe you can tell me. What's the story with this kid Tannen jerk anyway? Biff's father. By this time next year, he'll be pulling down a life sentence in San Quentin. There was even a song about Wait, it. Wait, Biff will be born in 1938. And kid will be in prison. Is San Quentin recall, prison? He escaped from prison in 1937. Wait, he'll pull down a life hours. sentence in prison. In three hours. Jeez. No kidding. <laughs> no kidding. <sighs> There's someone you might not want to talk about. What do you know about Edna Strickland? Edna? We never really socialized when I was younger. She was a few years older than me, and we traveled in different socioeconomic circles. Why do you ask? She thinks you're a hero for burning down that speakeasy. She's doing a story on you. A story? Oh, yes. Now I remember. Ask Edna. The etiquette column that doubled as a pro-temperance soapbox. She believed that the consumption of alcohol would inevitably lead to a complete societal breakdown. Oh, Sounds please. like a fun gal. You should have seen her when the hippies started showing up in the 60s. She just somehow lost her mind. That would explain a lot. But... Well, here's an interesting little bit of t information. I know this really isn't the right time or place, but I found your notebook. Oh, so that's where I left it. Why'd you bring it here? Because the bank's selling off all your stuff. They can't do that. That's what I, I know. keep, that's what to I tell keep saying. Well, you hold on to it for safekeeping. We'll deal with my financial situation in 1986 after we saved me from a grisly death in 1931. Hang in there, Doc. Not the best fact, choice of words. Not the Marty. best choice of words, you know. Not exactly the best choice of words, Marty. Don't worry, Doc. If all goes well. Then everything will be fine. Young Doc's in the courthouse. Don't touch those! Damn it. These are very sensitive legal documents. Nobody is supposed to handle them but sworn officers of the court. Papa, I mean, Judge Brown says so. Judge Brown? Doc, uh, nice to meet you. I'm Michael, uh, Corleone. I'm at Brown, but I am a law clerk, not a doctor. Now, please get out of my way. I have important business to transact. Listen, Emmett, you don't know me, but I'm your friend. I'm not big on friends. They get in the way of work. What's this important business you're up to? It's a legal matter. Very complicated, very abstruse. I need to obtain five sets of initials on every copy of this writ of indemnification before Pop... I mean, before Judge Brown can even think of granting a waiver to the party of the first part. You have no idea what it's about. You have no idea, dude. That's how important it is. Come on, Doc. Uh, damn it. Uh, drop the Legal Eagle Act. I got something more important for you to do. Mr. Corleone, I'll have you know that the law is the very mortar that holds society together. And we in the legal profession are like brick masons building the edifice of the future. Did your dad tell you that? Every morning. So, Emmett, what time are you through with work? Depends. On weeknights, Pop sometimes keeps me in the office till 9. 9 at night? But today's Saturday. Right. So I probably won't get off before 10. How about you knock off work early and I'll buy you a beer, uh, or soda? What do you say? Don't try to tempt me from my duty with sugary beverages. Keeping the wheels of justice turning, that's my one passion in life. Besides, if I left before eight, my pop would kill me. Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Pop is the most learned, just, incorruptible judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. The only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. Listen, I understand you're working on a new invention in your lab. Invention? 
You must have me mixed up with somebody else. I'm in law. I have absolutely no interest in science. Or do we think they just have to... Come on, wait up a minute. You again? Can't you see I'm busy? Okay, so you don't want your old man to know. That's fine. Listen, we all keep secrets. But I'm telling you, you can level with me about this science project of yours. I the... am not a scientist. Go ahead, ask me what E equals. What does E equal? I have absolutely no idea. See? I don't know where you got your information from about me, mister, but you're wrong, wrong, wrong. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. See, I'm sort of in the science business myself. That's why I sought you out. Not that I care in the least, because science is the furthest thing from my own area of interest, which is law, but I don't believe you. It's true. I'm a scientist. So tell me something, Mr. Scientist, from your vast storehouse of scientific knowledge. Uh, the leg bone's connected to the thigh bone? Amazing. <sighs> Come on, you can trust me, Doc. Uh, Emmett, it's your future I'm looking out for, in more ways than one. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you and science. Oh, that word again! If you insinuate I'm a scientist once more, I'll sue you for defamation of character! <sighs> Not the easygoing person that Doc says he was. Valley Police Station. Christ, this place looks old, even for 1931. That's because the police station's been here since 1892. Doc, morning. How goes the escape plan? Not so good. Well, I met your younger self. Right. And he is well kind of uptight. Well, I'm really kind of uptight. I find that hard to believe. Tell me what happened. Simple. It's simple. I tried asking him about your rocket drill, but he says he's not a scientist. What? What? Oh, uh, Father. What's he got to do with this? What's he got to do with this? In 1931, I was still deathly afraid of my father discovering the truth about my scientific predilections. So I carefully kept them under wraps, practicing science at odd hours, away from his prying eyes. That sucks. That sucks you got that lot. right. Fortunately, I eventually stood up to him. But right now, my younger self probably thinks you've been sent by my father to check up on me. Well... Why does your younger self mutter all the time? Muttering? Why would I be muttering? I, I, I never mutter unless... Um... The Hill Valley Expo! The Expo? Yes, so we the Expo! How could I have forgotten? In a few months, the younger me will put on a demonstration at the Hill Valley Exposition, my first public foray into the world of science. Everyone in town will be there, including a number of noted inventors who shaped my career. So, it was a big success? No. no it was a not. miserable failure, but it was a spectacularly miserable failure, one which marked my transition from an amateur garage scientist into a professional seeker of truth. Okay, then, then explain this. What does this expo have to do with you muttering all the time? When I was younger, I used to relieve stress by working on complex mathematical conundrums. No doubt my younger self is working on some impossible problem in an attempt to work off cerebral steam in the weeks before the exposition. What was I muttering about? I don't know. Yes. Uh, H to the something with an inverse of something else. I'm not so good at equations. That's too bad. I bet if we could solve my younger self's problem, he'd be more inclined to listen to you. <sighs> what do I do to convince Team Doc that I'm not a spy? Uh, not sure. Maybe if we solve that problem he's working on, he'll be more inclined to trust you. You know, your younger self seems really dedicated to the law. It's a facade, I assure you. I had to keep up appearances to appease my father. 
Let's talk about your younger self's problems later. Okay, but don't forget, we're on a bit of a deadline here. I know, Todd. <laughs> Yeah, I know, guys. Oh, Will you God. just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. Damn it. Uh, about your... Don't say it. Don't say it. Nah. 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 Crap. <sighs> figure out what my younger self is talking about. Hey, how you doing, Ainey? You gonna get in there, boy? You gonna get in there, buddy? Hey, Ainey, come here for a sec, boy. Here you go. God, that gives, that gives young doc, young doc, I won't give you the time of day. What's him muttering about to himself, muttering to himself about when he thinks you're not listening? You got it. Now if I can, now if I can only find him. Now if I can just find him. That's the problem, is I can't find, is I can't always find him. Doc's mumbling about We get, well, I can only figure out what he's talking, what he's, what he's yakking on about. See if he's in here. No, he isn't. Excuse me. Um. Excuse me. Okay. Hey, um, uh, never mind. Never mind. Nope. It's not here. It's not here. Maybe he'll, I don't know, maybe he'll come out of hiding. Wherever, wherever he is, wherever he's hiding at. There, there he is. Found you. I should record some samples of old-timey people talking and use it in a new song. Come on. Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I am oh, Lord, I so, I so stressed. Got it. Think. 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 Now that you got what you needed, that is only one thing left to do. Play the tape and let Doc and let Doc solve his own solve his own equation. Psst, Doc. Does this so, Doc, thing? Does this ring a bell? Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. Good grief! Is that me? I sound so young. I was, I was gonna, gonna say, say intense. intense. I forgot how wound up I used to get. Yeah, but what are you muttering about? Oh, that's easy. It's Ivanov's conundrum. Just tell my younger self that H equals the Hamiltonian operator. I won't giving him the answer mess up the time no, stream? No, only if it turns fine. out that reality is actually nothing more than a holographic illusion created by the interplay of subatomic particles on a vast two-dimensional membrane. So... It'll be fine. Hang in there, Doc. Not exactly the best choice of words, you know. Well, gee, you know, what if H is the Hamiltonian operator? The Hamiltonian operator. Of course. Will you just course. give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. Well, then maybe the you H should equal the Hamiltonian operator. 
What did you just say? say? I said maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. operator. Yeah. Great Scott! If H is the Hamiltonian, then H to the A multiplied by the inverse of H can only be the same as the expectation value for A. <laughs> That's it! That's the solution to Ivanov's conundrum, the problem I've been wrestling with in my head all week! I'm sure you would have figured it out by yourself in a day or two. The way you figured out how to build that rocket power drill. Where did you learn so much about science? Uh... Well, it's like this. You know about my rocket power drill? Then there can only be one explanation. What? You're from the patent office. I confess I didn't quite know what to expect when I sent the paperwork, but I never expected this. Welcome! I'm at your service. What can I do for you? Can I see your rocket power drill? Of course, of course. Naturally, it's just a scale model, but it's nearly operational. I can show it to you, say, first thing in the morning. Now, it's no good. I need to see a full-size model. <gasps> That's fully operational. Whoa! Tonight. <gasps> Otherwise, we'll have to award the patent to a competing inventor, Dr. McCoy. It can't be done! I mean, it might be possible to construct a full-size working model in that time frame, but I haven't got the main ingredient for the fuel. I'll get it for you. What is it? 190 proof grain alcohol. And you know how difficult it is to get a hold of alcohol these days. Especially now that someone's blown up the speakeasy. And besides, there's no way I can get off work until I've delivered the subpoena. Part of the investigation into the business affairs of Kid Tannen. Is it vitally important you see that rocket power drill today? Yes. Is it vitally important you deliver that subpoena today? Yes! Listen, I'll help you deliver it, and I'll see to what you get the alcohol you need. Shh. It'll help you get that drill finished by tonight. Deal? Deal. Here's the subpoena. Arthur McFly? You got a subpoena my grandpa? <gasps> Shh. It's Kip Tannen. Hey, I, I just saw him at the soup kitchen yelling at Arthur McFly. I'm not surprised. Arthur does the books for his business. What kind of business? That's what the DA is trying to find out. Let's go talk to him. That's what we're trying to find. That's what they're trying to find out. can tell us where Arthur's hiding. Yeah, well, he can also have us fitted for a Chicago overcoat. A Chicago overcoat? Chicago overcoat. What the hell, Matches? You, you got kiwi all over my socks! Sorry, boss. First of all, you're wearing shoes. You're wearing shoes, you idiot. You? Huh? I'm sitting oh? in the shoe shine booth. You walk up. Either you're here to shine my shoes, or you got a death wish. Which is it? I'm looking for a guy named Arthur McFly. He's my uh, sort of a relative. He's my employee. He's very busy today. Tell me. Since you're Arthur's boss, you know where he is, right? He's at the, uh, office. Where's the office? I forget. Oh, you forget, huh? Isn't that Arthur McFly's hat you're holding? It was McFly's hat. Now, it's my peanut bowl. <laughs> I don't think so, Tannen. Can I have some peanuts? Why not? I'm a magnanimous kind of guy. Go ahead, knock yourself out. Hey, kid. Yeah? What the hell is that? Hey! <laughs> See ya, boys. Are you boys? <laughs> Looney, you loser. Hey! 
Now, fix me up. <laughs> Perfect. You learn how to move like Gentleman that. Jack Grandma Thomas. Football. They used to call me the straight kid. Get out. Yeah, boy. Perfect. Oh, boy. All right. Let's see. Early in the game, Marty used an object to find its owner. How? From it. All right. All right. Let's do that, then. Let's do that. Hey, honey. Come here for a sec, boy. Hey, boy. Can you find the guy who belongs to this hat? Where's he going? Only one way to find out. Only one way to find out. Follow him. All right. Huh. Deja vu. Talk about deja vu. Need any help? Um, never mind. Let's see. Yeah? Who is it? It's McFly! Shh, I know! I know that. Hey, Arthur, can you come down a minute? Do I know you? We represent the law. You don't want to go against the law, do you? No, but I don't want to go against Kid Tannen either. And he ordered me to stay put till he gives the word. Sorry. Some other time. Crap. Need any help? Um, never mind. Okay. They say rats always return to the scene of the sinking ship. Uh, get him, Matches. You son of a... What do you think you're doing up there, you scrawny little runt? Get down here right now! Don't make me angry, smucko! Get down here and face... Einstein! Help! <laughs> Lay off! Get away from that crazy mutt! Go, go away, dog! I'm busy here! Go on, scram! Perfect. Where'd he go? You let him get away, idiot! Yeah, look who's t look who's talking, dumb dumb. Tannen, look who's talking. You're because you're an idiot. You're the idiot here. Not not your gang. Not your gang member. All right, time to head back. Time to head back to the office. <sighs> All right. All 
All right, let's try this again. What now? I hope Arthur's. All right. Still where I left him. Go. Try playing it. What do you think you're doing up there, you scrawny little runt? Get down here right now! Kid! Right away, boss! <laughs> ah, where's Kid? Gotcha! You're not getting out. You're not getting away. You're not going to get out of this. Arthur get McCoy. out of it this time. Yeah? Got something yeah. for you. Thanks! A subpoena! Ordering you to appear in court and provide evidence in the investigation into... Kid Tannen! Take it back! You can't get rid of it, Mr. McFly. Once you've been served, it's your duty to report to the court at the earliest possible time. Failure to do so could lead to a warrant for your arrest. Arrest? But Kid will kill me. Stupid, stupid Artie. Holy cats, what am I gonna do? I suggest you avail yourself to the protection of the court. Oh gosh, oh gosh. That's the best thing you can that's the best possible thing you can do. Is avail yourselves to the court. Oh, I hate doing stuff like that. But I won't have to much longer. No? Once we get that 190 proof alcohol and build my rocket drill, my future will be set and I'll be able to quit this crummy job. Oh, right. Mr. Corleone, try not to draw any undue attention my way. I'm on the trail of a hot new scoop, as we in the newspaper business say. So, tell me, what's the scoop? I've heard rumors that something shady is going on at the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen. It's under new management, you know. And, oh, we mustn't jump to any conclusions. Not till the facts are in. I hope to heaven it is just a rumor. That soup kitchen is the front line in the good fight. If it goes bad, what will happen to the Stay Sober Society? Not to mention all the charitable institutions that depend on me for soup deliveries. Well, then tell me. Did you finish the story you interviewed me for? About Carl Sagan? Yes, but those pig-headed editors at the <gasps> paper rejected it. They said my story was slanted and that I was glorifying a suspected arsonist. As if their stories aren't always glorifying the criminal vermin that run this town. This whole thing makes me so <sighs> mad I could spit. Though of course I never would. <sighs> There's an ordinance against it, and it's so unfortunate. All right. Are they hot Wait. soup deliveries? It's one of my many small contributions to the good right. cause. Healthy bodies, healthy souls. Or so one hopes. I pick up barrels of hot soup at the kitchen, and I deliver them hither and thither. Hill Valley Orphanage, the St. Francis Xavier Ranch for Unwanted Children, Foggy Mountain Home for the Incurably Insane, Shady Acres Rest Home. Oh, I can barely keep track of them all. It's a very big job. Really? Well, then... Tell me, what's the Stay Sober Society? You haven't heard of the SSS? They do the most marvelous work, taking hopeless drunken bums and turning them into former hopeless drunken bums. I'm one of the founding members. And not to say that I was ever, oh, well, you know. Anyway, we've always met in the cellar of the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen. But for some reason, the new managers don't want us down there, so we're stuck. We've got nowhere to meet. I know a place where the Stay Sober Society can meet. Oh? Where? The Brown Residence. You mean Judge Brown's place? Yeah, I happen to be good friends with his son Emmett, and he's told me the judge would love to lend his place out for, you know, good causes like yours. Really? Why, that's the most generous, public-spirited offer I've received in a month of Sundays. Please, tell your friend Emmett we accept. 
The meeting isn't due to start for a little while, so that'll give our people some time to set up. Hey, I can help you deliver soup. I don't need a lot of time to charities. Oh? Which ones? The, um, Mario Brothers. Ah, oh, yes. The Italians do so many good works. Really, Marty? Hey, fix this really? So I can the pick Mario up the Brothers? Of now hold your horse First of all, those are plumbers, not, the soup not, not a charity. I'm not about to turn it over to an but if you're well connected with the local charitable institutions... Yeah? You can let me know when they're running low on soup. All right. Well, let me just um, say that. I'm sorry about the way Einstein lit into you back there. I don't, I don't know what well, got into him. I don't know what well, got I into him. Well, I hope it. you've learned to keep him under control. Yeah, I found someone to keep him distracted. Very good. Now let's see if you know your multiplication tables. I got a book. Oh, where? All right. A cue ball. What? The truck just arrived with a fresh shipment of, uh, soup. Soup? Soup? Well, uh, this is the regular soup, and this is the special soup. Right. Special. Hey, what are you doing? I'm spicing up the soup. It's my secret recipe. Listen, Ugh. this ain't the Savoy, and we ain't here to feed these bozos no fancy soup. The boss has got a business to rebuild, so knock off the goofing and mind your post. All right, all right. Just try the soup. Ugh. Well? Ah, I can see why you want to keep this a secret. Nobody in their right mind would eat this crap. Uh, excuse me. Yeah? Can I have a bowl of soup? You're a soup kitchen. What do you think? Right. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, what kind of soup is this? It, it tastes like... Scroll a ribolita? I was gonna say we go cabbage. cabbage. Everyone's a critic. Look. All I got to work with is this two-bit soup in a barrel and spice rack that hadn't been restocked since the Coolidge administration. What do you think I should do to perk this slop up? Let's see. Have you tried... Paprika? Paprika? Uh, I, I just think you could use a little uh, color. Color? Hmm. Huddle up, Emmett. Huddle? Just listen up for a second. Any ideas about how to get the hooch? Hooch? The alcohol, Emmett. Ah, one might come to the conclusion that the hooch is being hidden in some of those barrels. You're probably right, but which ones? Now, if I could get my hands on some of those barrels, I could weigh them and compare their specific gravity. Specific gravity? Come on, Emmett. Kids goons aren't going to let us do an experiment on their barrels. No, oh, I suppose you're right. We'll just have to ask the guy behind the counter. What? Ask him if any of his barrels are filled with illegal moonshine? Get real here. Well, I imagined a modicum of subtlety would be used. Subtlety. Right. Any ideas about how to get the hooch? Hooch? The alcohol, Emmett. Ah, one might come to the conclusion that the hooch is being hidden in some of those barrels. You're probably right, but which ones? 
Now, if I could get my hands on some of those barrels, I could weigh them and compare their specific gravity. Specific gravity? Come on, Emmett. Kids goons aren't going to let us do an experiment on their barrels. No, oh, I suppose you're right. We'll just have to ask the guy behind the counter. What? Ask him if any of his barrels are filled with illegal moonshine? Get real here. Well, I imagined a modicum of subtlety would be used. Subtlety. Right. We'll score that hooch somehow. I'll keep cogitating. <sighs> There's no way I'm going to keep that door open without some help. Emmett. Yes? Emmett, I can't get into the door over there. Those tables are jamming it shut. The door? So your plan is to just waltz in there and take a barrel of alcohol? Uh, no. Uh, of course not. That would be stupid, right? I'll say. Still, I'd like to get that door open. I can't do anything from out here. Well, that's a simple matter of physics. A lever, some sort of stop. Let me see what I can come up with. Eureka! Looks like these pipes go into the basement. Okay, I've got some more ideas about your soup. Do tell. Let's see. Have you tried... Parsley? It might help to, uh, complement the mellow flavor of the cabbage. Complement the mellow... What are you talking about? Trust me. Hmm. You might get be something, something kid. kid. Let me see what I got. Let me see what I got. Let me see what I can do. Let me see what I can do about that. What do you need, Doc? Nope. I'm still not getting through here. At least those tables are propped up now. Alright. Emmett. Emmett. Yes? yes. Alright. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Just a little mechanical ingenuity. In the end, the door is open. Yeah, good job. We'll score that hooch somehow. I'll keep cogitating. Keep thinking of it. Excuse me. You talking to me? Let's see. All right. So maybe you could give me some information here. What's a tough guy like Kid Tannen doing running a soup kitchen? Mr. Tannen purchased the soup kitchen from the Sisters of Mercy in an effort to repair his reputation as a respectable community figure after his fine name was besmirched by the malignant and malicious... Melissa's the actions of the misguided vandals that 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 done burned down his place of business. It's speakeasy. I cannot confirm nor deny any claims of so-called illegal bootlegging at the the just eat your damn soup, pipsqueak. Then why don't you tell me so this place used to be a soup kitchen? What do you mean? Used, used to be. To be. Despite recent changes in ownership, this joint is still available for the purposes of distributing food to the needy and the not-so-well-to-do. 
and no other purposes whatsoever. Right. Let's see. So then... Why is the soup in a barrel? Because it's hard to ladle off the floor. Ugh. God, that's gotta, that's gotta be murder. I still think the soup needs more flavor. Idiot. Nice rack. Yeah, we got all kinds of uh, culinary enhancements back there. Kitchens for management only, Rummy. Whoa! Looks like these pipes go into the basement. All right. Looks like these pipes go into the basement. <clears throat> okay. Hey, um, never mind. I still think the soup needs more flavor. Looks like these pipes go into the basement. Yuck. Oh, that's gotta be terrible. Nice rack. Yeah, we got all kinds of the uh, culinary enhancements back there. I better not talk to him. I don't want to mess up his timeline. The chef in the suit appears to be utilizing some sort of audio cue. I still think the soup needs more flavor. Kitchens for management only, Rummy. Whoa! The kitchens for management only, Rummy. Whoa! Kitchens for management only, Rummy. Whoa! Uh 
Um. What is it, kid? I still think the soup needs more flavor. for management only, Rummy. Oh! Emmett. Emmett. Yes? yes? Any ideas about how to get the hooch? Hooch? The alcohol, Emmett. Ah, one might come to the conclusion that the hooch is being hidden in some of those barrels. You're probably right, but which ones? Now, if I could get my hands on some of those barrels, I could weigh them and compare their specific gravity. Specific gravity? Come on, Emmett. Kids' goons aren't going to let us do an experiment on their barrels. No, oh, I suppose you're right. We'll just have to ask the guy behind the counter. What? Ask him if any of his barrels are filled with illegal moonshine? Get real here. Well, I imagined a modicum of subtlety would be used. Subtlety. Right. We'll score that hooch somehow. I'll keep cogitating. What is it, kid? Why is the soup in a barrel? Because it's hard to ladle off the floor. So this place used to be a soup kitchen. What do you mean, used to be? <clears throat> Despite recent changes in ownership, this joint is still available for the purposes of distributing food to the needy and the not-so-well-to-do. And no other purposes whatsoever. Right. Mind if I look around a bit? No. Nice rack. Yeah, we got all kinds of uh, culinary enhancements back there. It's kind of blocked off there, isn't it? Yeah, but what can you do? Doc Jr.'s thingamabob holds out. <clears throat> what is it, kid? I still think the soup needs more flavor. Those barrels. What about them? What kind of soup is that? It's not so. Uh, uh, it's special soup. What's special about it? It's uh, it's made for grown-ups, kid. A <laughs> soup for grown-ups? That's right, kid. Be nosy. See where it gets you. Ah. 
Nice rack. Yeah, we got all kinds of uh, culinary enhancements back there. It's kind of blocked off there, isn't it? Yeah, but what can you do? <clears throat> what is it, kid? I still think the soup needs more flavor. <laughs> 